to be back. I'd like to talk to you today about something I haven't covered before, and that's statics. If you're in engineering or engineering technology, you may find yourself in a statics class, and it's only reasonable to wonder, what is this, and why should I put all this effort into learning it? All right, well, statics is the first in a series of structural analysis classes. And structural analysis is basically how to design structures so they don't fall over. If you've ever gone up a building or driven over a bridge or anything like that, you've been the beneficiary of somebody who understood structural analysis. And if you're in engineering or engineering technology, you're going to be one of those people. So let's, let me tell you a little bit about what statics is and sort of where it fits in the program. Now, I'm not going to go over the details of statics in this video. There'll be others where I'll do that. Okay, but statics is, is usually a series in, in the first in a series of oftentimes three courses. The first one is statics. Okay, the next one, now in the U.S. it gets called a lot of different things. Um, where I teach, it's called strength of materials. And I've heard it called, when I was in college, we called it deformables or deformable solids. I've seen it called MODS, M-O-D-S, which I think stands for Mechanics of Deformable Solids or Deformable Structures. And the last one is Finite Element Analysis, and that usually gets uh, contracted to FEA. It's Finite Element Analysis. And so all I want to do now is tell you a little bit about what these are and where statics fits into the, the program here. Statics is the simplest form of structural analysis. It's nice because it's mathematically pretty tractable. It gives you the kinds of problems you can solve with uh, pencil and paper and a calculator. In fact, it used to be pencil, paper, and slide rule. And lots of structures that you use all the time were designed using statics. If you've ever driven over a bridge made before, I don't know, probably 1970, um, almost certainly that structure was not designed using a computer and finite element analysis. There was, there's probably statics in there somewhere, and probably a lot of it. Any big truss structure that lapped from a long time ago um, almost, almost certainly done using statics. Now, statics assumes a couple of things. The, the, the big one is that it assumes the structure is rigid. All right? Now, that may not, might not be obvious at first glance why that matters, but if your structure is rigid, it makes the math a lot easier. Now the simplest structure I can imagine is a little stick here. This is just a little piece of wood I've cut that I've used for other things. And if I bend the ends, it flexes. Okay, that's, that's you know, pretty obvious that's going to happen. If I push in like that, I can get it to buckle. Okay, Those happen because this structure is flexible. It's got something called an elastic modulus. There's two kinds of stiffness a structure can have. The first is the stiffness due to its shape, and the other one is the stiffness due to the material you make it out of. And the stiffness due to the material is called the elastic modulus. Well, in statics, technically speaking, we're assuming that the elastic modulus is infinite. The structure, no matter how you load it, is never going to deform. Well, okay, it's not exactly right. But think about it. If you're uh, driving over a bridge, how much does that bridge really deform? You know, not very much. Now, maybe um, a very, very large bridge might deform you know, this far in the wind. Well, that seems like a lot on a human scale, but it's tiny compared to the dimensions of the bridge. So by assuming no deformation, um, we can get about the right answer with a drastic decrease in the mathematical complexity. That's what statics is good for. You can get an approximate answer very quickly. All right. Now, strength of materials, we go the next step. Strength of materials, we really do account for this kind of thing. All right? The fact that, stru that structures really do bend. If you've uh, been on an airliner, you know how when, when you're run, rolling down the runway, if you look out at the wings, when you go to take off and the nose of the plane goes up, well, the wings that were sitting there like start bending up. Well, the reason they're bending up is they're making lift. They're making the lift that's going to carry the plane off the ground. Well, the, the wings are a flexible structure because they're now under a load they weren't under before. They start to bend upwards, and that's by design. Nothing's wrong. Okay, that strength of materials. That's you know, if this is the airplane wing, it starts to bend up. Now, hopefully not that far, but it bends up under load. The problem with the, the advantage of strength of materials is that you get a more accurate answer than you do with statics because you're taking into account the deformations, which is good. The problem with strength of materials is the math can get pretty nasty. And so if a structure gets very complex, you can't analyze it by hand anymore. The math is just too difficult. So that's where finite elements comes in. Finite elements takes um, elements of statics, it takes elements of strength of materials, it includes the 
uh, stiffness of the structure and it casts it into a form that allows you to uh, analyze the structure on a computer. Basically, if you can draw a picture of the structure and divide it up into little elements, little finite elements, not infinite elements like you might see in calculus, but finite elements, finite sized elements, you can have the computer do all the gnarly math for you and just tell you what the answer is. So we start here with statics, okay? we go to strength of materials, and we go to finite element analysis. Now practically speaking, in, when, you, when you're designing complex structures, you're always designing them with finite element analysis because this is just too hard. All right? If you stick to these, you're going to wind up only designing structures you can analyze, and that's really limiting. Using finite element analysis, our analysis abilities get much, much more advanced, and we can design much more complicated structures. Think about the American Space Shuttle that was just recently retired. Inside that, uh, the wing of that thing is a pin-jointed aluminum truss. Well, is that the most, uh, most uh, efficient structure? No. But the design was frozen in the late 70s, I think. It first launched in 81, so it had to have been frozen in the 70s. And in the 1970s, that's what we can analyze, so that's what we built. And if there's ever a follow-on to the shuttle, certainly it's going to be more sophisticated. And one of the reasons that the structure can be more sophisticated is this right here. I can now do finite element analysis on a laptop computer. I haven't seen the app yet. I can probably run an FEA on my uh, iPad if I knew where the software was. Certainly the computational power is there. So that's where this fits in. The reason we don't start with finite element analysis is if you don't know what you're doing, a big finite element package looks an awful lot like a video game. All right? And if you don't understand what's going on, you're not going to know whether you're getting the right answer or not. Before you have any business running a finite element analysis, you have to have done statics, you have to have done strength and materials. Or by the time you get to here, you're just guessing. And I don't know about you, I don't want to drive across bridges designed by somebody who was just guessing and assuming, oh, it's a nice computer, the picture's pretty, it must be right. Ooh, that doesn't make me feel good. So statics is a great way to start, and it's amazing how close you can get using statics. When I teach statics, I have my students do a problem using statics before I have them uh, use using a finite element analysis to see how close that answer really is. Okay, so here's the big idea. Statics is the first class. We assume a rigid structure. We calculate stresses, but we never calculate displacements because there aren't any. Right? When you want to find displacements and the effect of those displacements on stresses, you use strength of materials. And when you want to account for all that stuff in a complex structure, you use finite element analysis. So there it is. It's a one, two, three kind of progression. Hope this helps. In follow-on videos, I'll be talking more about statics and how to solve statics problems.